Donald Trump won't save you. Nigel Farage won't save you. Pierre in Canada won't save you. Even as a free market capitalist, I can tell you the right wing politicians aren't going to make a dramatic change in your life or your business. This is why. One of the reasons why I became the nomad capitalist was I felt politically homeless where I uh, was from. I, as a free market capitalist, often held my nose and said, all right, I'll vote for the right wing guy because I'm a business person. That is my greatest identity. I want stuff that's pro-business. I don't want to be paying more money to this government that's wasting my tax dollars. But I never entirely agreed with the right wing on certain personal freedoms, on things like wars. And yet I realized voting for some libertarian who's going to get 1% of the vote, that's not the solution either. And yet what I want to tell you is why uh, red states and why right wing politicians aren't going to save you, whether you're an American, a Canadian, uh, whether you're British or Australian, not only is every politician looking out for their own interests, including the ones that you might happen to agree with, but where I think the right wing falls, as it in becomes in certain countries more populist, is they will be against options. I never physically understood the idea of taking your nationality as an identity you should be proud of. What, what did you do to earn that? You just It was bestowed upon you by a matter of chance. And yet it is generally right-wing politicians who want you to recite, or I'm from, the Pledge of Allegiance. They want you to put your hand over your heart and, and sing the national anthem and do this conditioning where you should uh, work for the state. Now, there are countries that are bringing back or talking about bringing back conscription. That is not always done by right-wing politicians, to be fair. But for me, when I read comments like this, I think to myself, as someone who wants options in my life, as someone who doesn't think that a country makes you and you should go where you're treated best, I say to myself, uh, the right wing may not have my back. Someone said, I watched a video with Vivek Ramaswamy, who ran for president, Republican primary, and Ann Coulter. Her, her thing has been immigration for 25 years. And they were talking about how they were against dual citizenship. Now, both Ann Coulter and Vivek talked about illegal immigration. Ann Coulter's been talking about shutting down legal immigration for a long time. We may agree on some of that. We may disagree on some of that. I happen to think that the way the world is going, whether you like it or not, is the most talented people are going to win. And the barriers to stop someone who's in Mexico or Malaysia or Montenegro, who's more talented than an American, that, you know, from that person getting a job, those barriers are coming down because Nomad Capitalist has 100 people working here. Not a single one works in the United States. And that actually benefits me to not have them working in the United States. I can go and we find the people who are best for the job, not because of their nationality, but because they're the best. And I think that in some small way, I've told you many times, that is part of why you're seeing Americans, their wages aren't growing as fast. A lot of Western countries are feeling that same pinch. And so people like Vivek and Ann Coulter have some prominence in some circles. If only we stopped letting in the immigrants. Well, if you let the immigrants in, at least you can tax them. At least the money comes into your coffers. At least you're the one, you know, that's getting the person who's going to do the next AI. I understand not everybody who's immigrating is, you know, part of AI or working in Silicon Valley or doing something great or paying a lot of taxes, but some of them are. And the barriers of, you know, only Americans should make good money and everyone else, uh, you know, can suffer because we want to have our three cars in the garage. I think those days are over. But here's why I make that comment. Vivek and Ann Coulter then made, uh, had this discussion where they said how they're against dual citizenship. And I think they're conflating the two by saying that in the same way we need to keep immigrants from coming in, including they want to reduce legal immigrants. And if you agree with them, fine. Uh, I respect that. But why should you as a citizen of the country have fewer options because of their sort of jingoistic view of the world? This commenter says many closed-minded people on the far right would agree that there should not be dual citizenship. And we've seen, I don't want to throw around terms, but certainly there's some people who are anti-Semitic about it. Not to say that everything said about Israel is anti-Semitic, but there's been some anti-Semitic comments about dual citizenship and people use that as kind of their, their fuel. Uh, policies against dual citizenship would most likely occur under a far right government. Yeah, I mean, if we look at the governments around the world that opened up uh, dual citizenship, which has happened to a greater extent than you might think over the last 25 years. They might be center left. I don't know if they're far left. But they were probably more center left. I mean, Germany uh, is opening up, not only making it easier to naturalize, which you might agree with or not, but is making it easier to become a dual citizen German. Uh, I think it's a good thing. Uh, the world has changed, and uh, it is the 
uh, nature of gentlemen and should be the nature of countries to change with them. And so this particular person commented and said, hey, Ann Coulter and Vivek talking about why you shouldn't have dual citizenship means you have fewer options. Now, they may not want to raise your taxes, but the side product of you having fewer options is the government's going to be more uh, emboldened to do whatever they want. And in the United States, you still have citizenship-based taxation, as I'm sitting here, which means as an American, no matter where you live, you're going to pay some tax, or at least you're going to be filing tax returns. We help people legally reduce their tax. If you go to nomadcapitalist.com slash apply, we can still help Americans save 80, 90, even 100%, give or take, of the amount of taxes you pay by moving overseas. I don't think Vivek and Ann Coulter like that idea. I think even though we are all ostensibly free market capitalists, and we probably agree on a number of things, we very vehemently, I would guess, disagree on that. And we certainly vehemently disagree on dual citizenship. I don't think you need to be saying the Pledge of Allegiance. If you want to be proud of your identity and the culture in your community and the people in your inner circle and the things that you've accomplished, that's great. Uh, let me tell you this. There are people all over the world, because we have clients from all over the world, who are building multi-million dollar businesses. I had a guy from a village in Egypt, moved to Cairo at 18 years old, has a multi-million dollar business. He didn't have to move to the United States to do that. It's not the only place people become successful. It's becoming easier to do all over the world. In fact, the vast, vast, vast majority of my success came from after leaving the U.S. And you can say I went to the public school system there for most of my uh, upbringing. Well, we paid for the public school system. It should not be the only system you have to pay for for life. And I think that's where I would disagree with people on the right wing. I think they want to uh, restrict your freedoms. Not saying they as if I'm some crazy left wing Bernie Sanders voting guy. Uh, I've been very harsh on the new Labour government in the UK, on the previous government in New Zealand, on you know Justin Trudeau in Canada, Biden and you know wanted to raise your taxes. But you ought to be allowed to have dual citizenship. And it shouldn't be the government's job to tell you. And the reality is the thing of dual allegiances, yeah, becoming St. Lucian by going through a citizenship by investment program, I doubt there's going to be, you know, when the big U.S. St. Lucia war breaks out, you know, you'll have to choose which side you're on. So that's one thing that I'm concerned about. One citizenship can be your undoing, even if you choose not to leave the country. Uh, you're more likely to be conscripted. You have fewer options in that regard. There are some countries that say if you're a dual citizen, you can avoid conscription or you can do something to avoid conscription. I don't think the government should be allowed to force you. You know, you abolished slavery a long, long time ago. Let's not bring it back to force people to join and take up arms. Trade wars against your business, one of the things I've talked about, if there are going to be more tariffs, what trade wars are out there. I talked about some of the sanctions, whether they're good or bad. I don't think they help the U.S. I don't think they help U.S. businesses. I think they're a desperate laugh, last act of a dying empire, and that's eventually going to hurt your business. Uh, if you only have one citizenship, I guess you're going to go down with the ship when more countries in BRICS or whatever other alliance get together and say, yeah, we don't really want to work with American companies. We work with these plenty of companies that we have. And every time the U.S. sanctions one of our countries, yeah, oh yeah, chip, we can't get chips. All right, we'll start making our own chips. Okay, problem solved. I think that's going to hurt you eventually. And I think that this right-wing concept of American exceptionalism, sure, there are things about the so-called American experiment that are good. I don't know how many of them exist today. So let's not, as I talked about at Nomad Capitalist Live, let's not live in nostalgia, right? I worked in the radio business for some time in my industry. Uh, and I talked about how there were these once great radio stations, WCBS and KGO and others, that have now been reduced to a, a, an utter tiny fragment of a shell of themselves. I didn't stick around in the radio business because it was over. I made money while I could, and I exited stage right. And I think that's where uh, the U.S. is. So sure, is there some great history? Great. In relationships, we've all had friendships, we've all had love relationships. There was a great history. You can't look back on the great history when there's a current uh, big problem. You have to deal with the big problem in the current. Uh, and so, uh, you know, quite frankly, I just think that, you know, it's going to be the right wing who talks more about uh, rah, 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 American exceptionalism. And I think that American exceptionalism talk causes people to overlook by poo-pooing every other country. Oh, Brazil, what are you, oh, really, we're losing to Brazil? Even people on the left, quite frankly, who, you know, the Bill Maher types who are a little bit more sympathetic to the right wing now, they're like, how are we losing to Brazil? I mean, Brazil, like, like, like like this attitude, only your country does great things, you're right. I mean, whether you like them or not, look at what China's done. Look at what a lot of countries, look at what Asia is a continent, all the different countries there. Look at what so many countries have done. The game has changed. 
That's why Trump was elected in the first place, because people realized, hey, we're not running the show in its entirety anymore. And I think clinging on to American exceptionalism and saying, oh, you know, how could anybody be better than us will be your downfall. I think a sane understanding that I've gotten by traveling to over 100 countries and living in a number of them and, and spending my entire life now outside the United States, I realize what's actually going on you know, in the global economy more than I would if I had stayed sitting in the United States. I see the actual situation and the US doesn't, yeah, powerful country, no doubt, not as powerful as it used to be. And that will eventually trickle down to hurt you. And if you don't have another citizenship and if you don't have options, uh, it you know, may not be your entire undoing, but it will hurt you in some way. And so, you know, there are gonna be people saying, well, that's great. If you're, you know, if you're just, if you're not on you know, board with everything right wing, then that's great. You just pack your bags and leave. Well, I, I did already, thank you. And I handed back my passport too in the ultimate act of blasphemy. Uh, if you're watching this far and you're watching Nomad Capitalist, right? We go where you're treated best. That's the five magic words here. If your knee-jerk reaction, not, 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 you think about it for a minute, but just if the knee-jerk reaction is, oh, this guy's anti right well, he's a jerk then you're probably not ready for what we're talking about because the piece that I've gotten of all my years being out of the US is I don't have the knee-jerk reactions anymore. I don't, if someone wants to pick on the United States about something, I don't get insulted like that's my identity. And so, you know, one of the things that we created to help people kind of get into the flow was our annual event, Nomad Capitalist Live, where you come and you hang out with about 800 people. We've got speakers from all around the world. Uh, you know, this past year, it was Tony Fernandez, CEO of AirAsia paid 26 cents to buy AirAsia from the Malaysian government, turned it into a big, big, big company. One of the wealthiest guys in Malaysia. Amazingly down to earth guy. We had drinks with him in the VIP room afterwards. But he told his story to the audience of how the Malaysian dream is possible. And I'd love for you to be exposed to entrepreneurs from around the world, not just on stage, but in the audience. You know, the reason we have the event, uh, again this year in Kuala Lumpur, where I've lived part-time for the last decade, is I want you to see that outside of the right-wing bastion of your country, you can still be free, you can still be treated well, uh, you can pay a lot less in taxes, uh, you can have a lot of the good stuff. I think in, in, in many of the good ways, Malaysia is the United States of Asia, but not so much in the bad ways. I would evaluate that. What, what's the knee-jerk reaction? Oh, this guy's uh, saying we shouldn't say the Pledge of Allegiance. If your goal is to stay in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, uh, then you, know, you don't need this. But if your goal is to make sure that you and your children and your grandchildren have options, the U.S. is not what it once was. No one's turning it around. Trump's not turning it around and Vivek's turning it around. And, and I would say the same thing about all the, the legacy brand Western countries. You know, Nigel Farage spoke at Nomad Capitalist Live. We agree on some things. We don't agree on others. I asked him to come and talk about his being unbanked, which I think is unfathomable, that because you have a view outside of the, the mainstream, you should be kicked out of a bank? That's something you should know about and you should have options in other countries because that's coming to your country. If you're in the right wing, I, I, don't, I think people are burying their head in the sands on, on some of this stuff. But I don't agree with Nigel Farage on everything, including, well, I'm going to give it one last chance to save it. I I'm sorry, Nigel, I don't think it can be saved. I don't think the U.S. or Canada or the U.K. can be saved until people are willing to hit rock bottom, and I can tell you they're not. So if you're sitting there waving the flag, it's not going to help you. I think the right wing wants to keep you in place as a patriot to fight for them. It's mostly folks from the right wing. I'm not saying it's everyone from the right wing, but most of the people who tell me I'm a coward for leaving... Uh, because I chose to live somewhere else that I enjoyed more. I'm a coward. <laughs> uh, most of those folks do so, and they talk about standing up and being a patriot and all that kind of stuff and uh, fighting the woke complex and, you know, uh, the, you know it's going to go down without you fighting for it. You know what? Uh, everything has its momentum. If I have to stand there and fight for it, uh, it, it just doesn't work. Here's another comment. Lee Martinez, Trump and most other Republicans... Uh, would disagree with me. They would say you're not supposed to have choices better because what's better than the U.S.? If the U.S. started to restrict Americans from living overseas, it would most likely be under a Republican administration. Think what you want about you know, the left wing uh, in some of these countries saying, our country's terrible. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, listen, if the country's so terrible, you can understand why they want to leave, right? And they, you know, they may not like that you're leaving because you want to lower your taxes. They may not like other reasons that you're leaving, but hey, are they going to stop you from leaving? No, hey, listen. It was Biden, Biden's administration that worked with the EU to clamp down on Caribbean citizenship by investment. Not that it, it's still there, but you've got a few more hoops to jump through thanks to them. So it's, it's everybody. I a pox on all their houses. 
But the idea that the right wing is superior is my point. And then there's this. I, I've told you before, I worked around the talk radio industry for most of my uh, adulthood living in the US. Uh, I know the pitch points, throw around the word patriot and freedom a lot. Those are the buzzwords. How much freedom is it that J.D. Vance said, if you don't have children, you should pay higher taxes? Is your job to be a, a vessel for the state to produce future uh, taxpayers? I, I, I thought, you know, freedom. Uh, I hate to say it, found myself agreeing with some folks on the left wing when they're talking about uh, J.D. Vance and before it was Tucker Carlson. Go out and have lots of kids. Really? That's freedom? If someone doesn't want to have kids, they're a bad person. They should be, they should be punished by the government? Like, that, that's a superior thing? Maybe you agree with that one more because you have kids and you're, hey, I'll take the tax break. And yeah, this, you don't understand people who don't have kids. It's not freedom, though. You can throw in the word all you want. It is not freedom to say that people who make different choices than you should pay more or, uh, you know, can be mocked. Sure, mock them all you want. But um, not a good look for the Tucker Carlson's of the world to, to shame people who choose to do something different than what he wants to do. And so, you know, for all the talk about freedom and the, the right wing around the world trying to own that word, at least in the Western world, uh, not so sure. I think it's just a different set of freedoms. And my view is freedom is freedom. We did Live Like a King in, in Serbia, Live Like a King Belgrade. And it opened up at this really cool cabaret show. And the director of the show, he's smoking a cigarette in the club. You can smoke in the club in Belgrade. Now, I don't smoke. I've never smoked. I don't like the smell of smoke. But you know what? That is freedom. And people are like, oh, that's, that's, that's not freedom. That's just disgusting. No, no, no. It is freedom. You just find that particular freedom disgusting. And so... You know, I, I find the people who wrap themselves in the flag and wrap themselves in the word freedom, there is a danger in kind of starting to believe your own hype when you want to punish people who do things differently and not realizing that will come back and boomerang on you eventually. You know, how much freedom is it that the UK now wants to talk about having a draft to draft your kids in? Well, that's just patriotic. These lazy, these lazy kids should go. They're just sitting around playing video games. Send them to war. Really? Yeah, that's your own personal kind of bitter social commentary. Not freedom, telling people they can't spend 18 to 20 years old doing what they want. Call it what you want. It's not freedom. And finally, there were similar stories in Germany where there was talk of their grandparents ushering in the sexual revolution. Today's youth want to turn the clock back to 1950. Listen, maybe you agree with some parts of that. I think we can all agree there's probably some things from 1950 that uh, are better off in 1950. Doesn't mean I entirely agree with everything that's happening today. Uh, but again, what did you do in 1950 where I, where I come from? Uh, I pledge allegiance that we're the best country ever. Da, da, da. Really, not the way you want to go in this competitive world. And here's why I think I'm right. I see more and more stories of people who, within the United States, they moved from California to a red state and they moved back. They didn't fit in. They weren't accepted. People moved to red states in the U.S. to lower their taxes when you could move overseas. If you're going to abandon the place where you're from, if you're going to be a traitor, if you're going to run like a coward, don't run to Florida. Run to Panama, you lower those taxes a lot more. You know, you give your kids a lot more opportunities to learn. You'll give your kids dual citizenship eventually. You know, I, I never understood this thing where it's, it's not cowardly to abandon the people where you grew up as long as you're going to tax-friendly Nevada. But you're seeing so-called Republicans, right, people on the right wing, in places like California, who are uh, moving back. So I think that a lot of people are taking a surgical approach to this, where they're trying to, like, carve out within their own country some way to create some right-wing paradise, when the answer is to flip the table over. The answer is to play an all-new game. Uh, I think you have a better luck, whichever side of the, of the, the aisle you're on, of getting more of what you want by finding a country that represents your values. If you are right-wing, don't sit around and, and wave the flag and think that some right-wing politician is going to save you. They're not. Haven't lowered your taxes. Haven't stopped whatever the problems you think that exist. In fact, those problems have gotten worse. Is a bunch of right-wing politicians going to save it? And by the way, no, oh, they're not just the... Oh, if, we only, if only we had the right right-wing politicians. There are no right politicians. You're responsible for your life. And so my message is very simple. As always, go where you're treated best. Find a place that represents your values. We have some clients who are uh, more of left-leaning persuasion. They want different personal freedoms than people on the right want. They want to be in countries that where certain things are legal. There's a place for either side. Uh, but I think that some of these people who throw around the word patriot just are uh, unfortunately blinded to the opportunities that are out there. I don't understand 
why something that probably can't be saved is worth saving just because you're nostalgic about it. And I don't think that just because you say the word freedom a lot means that you have the most freedom. I'm always going to defend both personal and economic freedom in a relatively uh, libertarian way. And I think that any Western country where you're expecting a right-wing politician to bring that sort of culture back, you'll be waiting for a long time. This is Kuala Lumpur. This is going to be the craziest live like a king you've ever seen.